Joining me now to break this all down is the host of Tegna's Locked On Grizzlies podcast, Sean Coleman. Sean, thank you for joining us. What do you make of this move for the Grizzlies? Oh, it's an absolutely fantastic move. Now, on the surface, uh, losing Jonas Valanciunas is, is hard to see happen. Jonas, both on the court and off the court, was absolutely phenomenal, not only in terms of his personality, but his production and his consistency and how he embraced this whole roster. He was a big, big reason why things have been as successful as they are, especially coming off a career year last year. But the focus is on the future. Clayton, you and, my, and thank you, by the way, for having me on. You and others and myself, we've all heard Zach Kleiman talk about having the focus on the future. That was the idea, taking present value in Jonas, helping out a team that needed to clear cap space, and getting paid handsomely for the future when it comes to future picks that give us a lot of creativity and options moving forward. Yeah, and Jonas Valanciunas was clearly not only a fan favorite, but he was a very productive player for the Grizzlies in his two seasons, even more so offensively and defensively than Steven Adams by comparison, just one-on-one. -on -one. Do you think that he'll be able to, uh, to make up some of that lost production from losing Jonas here? Possibly. And, and the thing about it is, is that the reason why Jonas was such a great fit for the Grizzlies is that the Grizzlies are a team that do so well in the paint, right? But they're a team that struggle from three. Where they were able to use Jonas as a way to make that up was through offensive rebounds and gaining extra possessions to score. You're probably not going to get the same offensive production from Steven Adams that you do get from Jonas Valanciunas, but you certainly will still get the physical presence, probably an upgrade defensively with reasonable rebounding, not that it may be as good, but the big thing for the Grizzlies, you still have that source that takes the brunt of the of the banging down low to where Jaron doesn't have to, and that's the big reason why pairing Jaron with like Stephen Adams at least keeps that consistency there, so Jaron's injury risk is not high. So the Grizzlies have now traded up to ten. Who do you think is on their short list that they have in mind? There is it a Moses Moody? Is it a James Boak Knight? Who do you think? I really do think that Moody, the local product from Little Rock, is certainly someone that's on their radar. It makes sense. One of the biggest reasons why I think the Grizzlies did this is the ability to not have to trade a, a future pick to move up in this draft, to land in a zone where you can get that wing talent to pair with John Jaron. Um, Moses Moody, James Boatnight, Franz Wagner, Josh Giddy, all those names really stand out. Maybe a Jonathan Kaminga. I still think there's a better than 50% chance the Grizzlies want to again move up for the guy they truly want. They move up into the top 10. And that was going to be my next question. Some rumors now that the Grizzlies may move up even higher. Who do you think is worth that potentially to, to take that next step, get beyond that top 10? Moody and Bo Boat Knight have been the top two talents on my list in terms of Grizzlies-centric targets. Moody, because in terms of his age and his upside, 3 and D wing who has the ability to show upside in facilitation and creation as well. He, and he's a local product, he really, really stands out as being a superb fit for this Grizzlies team. And, Bo and James Boat Knight out of UConn, it's the shot creation, the three-level scoring, the alpha mentality when it comes to pairing with Jaw. You could have one of the more exciting backcourts going forward with John Boat Knight if he's the target. But those would be my top two targets of trading up. The NBA draft kicks off at 7 p.m. airing right here on ABC Local 24. Sean, thank you so much for taking some time. It was my pleasure. Thank you, Clayton.